First of all, I would like to thank the school board for accommodating us here this evening for a special meeting. And also, I thank you to the members of the community. It's great to see everybody here to listen and uh, kind of have a chance for us to share with, with everybody, not just the school board members, but the members of the community here as far as where we have come and where we're at today and also where we continue to go. Um, like I said, uh, we'll be running through quite a few slides here. For everything. I think the first thing we wanted to do was just try to level set with everybody and, and share as far as where we've come as far as a, a background and, and how this uh, facilities committee came to play, come to play, who was involved and, and where we've come so far. So last, last summer the school board put together a request for members of the community to come forward that were interested in sharing and participating in this committee. The ideal scenario was they had about 15 members and they were looking for um, at least two to three former school board members and those with expertise to be able to serve on this committee. And we were given a, a charter and a direction to assess the, the current conditions of the facilities in the school district and then also to look at three specific scenarios um, the labeled arbitrarily options A or option A or plan A, option B, and option C. Uh, we've kind of referred to those as the one campus, two campus, and three campus options, which you're going to hear us talk quite a bit about here in the next couple of minutes. Um, we, with that, we were asked to assess the current condition uh, for the facilities and their ability to meet the educational needs of the, of the school district, and then also to look at for future planning to do a cost <coughs> ass assessment to figure out which one of those plans was the most viable to go forward and then to come back with a recommendation. Um, so with that, the facilities committee kind of took that after the first couple meetings and, and came up with our own um, goals and, and the way that we looked at the objectives. The first one is that we wanted to make sure that we had a long-term solution for the district's facility. So whatever solution we came to, it was based on what was best for the, the long-term viability of the district. We wanted to make sure that this, whatever plan it was, offered maximum flexibility and efficiency for not only the staff and students, but also the ability to uh, uh, <coughs> offer a good education. And then also, the main goal was, all, and the third main goal that we were looking at was being able to provide an option that provided the maximum impact and cost savings for our general fund. Um, and that was not only an immediate impact to the general fund, but also what set the district up going forward to have the maximum success in being able to preserve the general fund. So, which kind of brings us to what we're gonna be talking about tonight. Um, this is gonna be a presentation as far as what we've come up with on and working through those three options. Um, so not only is it gonna be an update on what we've done there, but also we're gonna be encompassing another concept as far as uh, capital maintenance planning. This is kind of a forward-looking concept, which is something that our, our friends from KPE here are going to share with us in a little bit. Um, I guess it's already been up on the slide here for a little bit, but you know we see there in bold print. I just want to make sure that we understand where we are at as of today, and it's in bold print because it, it's important. No final decisions have been made yet. Um, we have worked through. Um, we are prepared to show where we're at, but it's important to. See um, understand that as we go through, and you're going to see a couple designs or, or uh, plans, but those are for concept purposes only. And that's one of the things we, we continue to work on is we are trying to come up with a, a final design and with that would come with the potential costs with that and then we can't have an impact on, we can't have an understanding of how that's going to impact our taxes until we know how much it costs. We don't know how much it costs until we know exactly what the design looks like. So. Um, we do have, after tonight, depending on where the board decides to go after this presentation, there are more decisions to be made, there's more planning to be done, and I think the other key point I want to make sure everybody <coughs> understands is that there's more communication to be done also uh, after we move past tonight. Um, so this is probably going to be my toughest slide of the night. Um, I am going to attempt to explain uh, educational finance in 30 seconds or less. <laughs> um, Good luck with that. 
Well, well, they're working on that. There wasn't a whole lot on that slide anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so here, here's my best way that I want to explain the, what we're looking at with the school finance scenario. We have something called the general fund. And with the general fund, that is where the core, I guess the way that I would put it, the core operating expenses for education in the school system happen. Um, what <coughs> our ability and size of the general fund is something that we talk about when we call budget authority or spending capacity. That is dramatically impacted uh, by enrollment. And also there's some state guidelines that go along with it. Like I said, we are on that slide. So it is, it is not an easy concept to understand, but I think it's important to talk about it right now because some of the things that we're going to be talking about is we're going to be talking about spending money because all the three plans would cost would have the price tag with them. Well, and I want to make sure that we have a base understanding as far as when we talk about spending money, well, how can you, how does spending money mean saving money? Well, when we are looking at the ability to reduce our operating costs with different facility plans that we have, those are going to be coming out of something that we that I would call capital expenditures, which operate differently from what happens in the general fund. So when we talk about um, the impact the impact of the general fund, that is being done by um, spending, which, as I just realized, I just done a horrible job of explaining what um, <laughs> general fund savings are. Uh, I guess the way, another way that I would look at it is, in order, if we, we have the capacity to spend for uh, capital expenditures, which is a separate bucket of funds that comes out of what's happening in, in the general fund. So, for example, if we wanted to spend money over here on something like uh, buses or the school facility itself, might allow us to save money in other areas such as utilities. So, hopefully that'll help a little bit, and this is one of the things that I'm going to refer back to when I said more information is to come. As we start developing a cost structure as far as what one of these plans or two of these plans might cost, we will be able to do a very good job of being able to articulate exactly what the general fund savings are, which at this point, we don't have the numbers that are finalized yet because we are still finishing and working through and, and waiting to make the final recommendation as far as exactly which plan we are working on. So with that said, I'm going to move on to the next slide. So this one's a little bit easier for me because these are the people that I've been working with here for the past six or seven months. One of the things that I wanted to point out here that when you look at the list, as far as the people that are represented here, we have um, we have students, former students and alumnus, we have parents, we have past board members, we have a past superintendent, and we have community members um, from many different communities in the district, and we have business owners. So the one thing that I was very pleased about is that there is a very wide spectrum of people um, that are being represented on this on this facilities committee. <coughs> So the first meeting that we had was held on July 26th of 2016. And we've had multiple meetings through the summer and fall of 2016. And <coughs> the work that we did working through those three different options, we looked at, at quite a few different factors here. One of the main things that we looked at as far as the different facilities options and the, the current state of the district was staffing levels. And to the level that we looked at it is the level of staffing in each building. We also took a level of a look at the total head count within of, of staff within the district. We looked at the level of staffing per student in the district, and then we also took a look at and we asked the uh, uh, administrators to pull up information, provide us with how do our staffing levels, both as a, from a total and from a per pupil standpoint, compare with other districts of our size and also in our geographic area. So. It was much more than just asking for a head count as far as what we have in, in each one of our buildings right now. Kind of the, the same aspect as far as what we did on the district expenditures. We took a very detailed look as far as what was happening in the general fund. Uh, both current, where our trends have gone over the last few years, and then also some potential projections on where our general fund could be moving over the next couple of years, particularly as we look at a potentially de declining enrollment. We also looked at general fund expenditures, expenditures per building, the categories of expenditures within the buildings, the cost per pupil or general fund expenditures per pupil, 
and how our general fund expenditures compare from an absolute standpoint and also from a pro pupil standpoint against our peers and then other, other ones in the district. So I guess I want to stress at this point when we talk about the fact that we dug, that we dug and dived and, and scraped through the numbers, we took a very deep look through this over the last, over those meetings that we had in the summer and fall of 2016. So here you'll see that, again, the three different options that we're going to be moving into and, and discuss here in just a second. Again, we have option A, which is basically our one campus option where the plan would be to consolidate all of our facilities into one location here in Griswold. And then we have option B, where we were asked to consider uh, moving to a two campus environment where we would close one of the elementaries, leave the other one open, and then leave middle school and high school here in Griswold. And then we have option three, which would be our three campus environment, which would leave all three, or all two elementaries open and then the obviously unchanged here um, in Griswold. Enrollment trends. This is something that we spend a lot of time talking about. Uh, you'll see here at the beginning, or at the top there, this is our, our current enrollment as far as what we have for 2016, 2017. You'll see what the pre-K numbers are, pre-K through five are in Elliott and Lewis, and then also where we're at for the middle school and high school. So with that said, we are looking at